Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There is no other name I know. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there's power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. There's no other name I know. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There is no other name I know. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's certainly a blessing uh, to be back in the household of the Lord, the household of faith. It's a blessing to be in his presence. But when we are in the presence of the Lord, the scripture says there is fullness of joy. And we have joy bells ringing down in our soul. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, let us remember men and women and children everywhere that the Lord himself will continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Let us pray for revival. Let us pray for renewed spirits. Let us pray that the Lord will send forth laborers into his vineyard, that we would work as unto the Lord, uh, esteeming those things that he esteemed, and loving those things that he loves and hating those things that he hates. Let us pray that we get the mind of Christ and the spirit of Christ. Let us pray that we'll fast and, and pray, amen, until Jesus comes and we'll seriously and honestly lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us, looking unto Jesus, who is simply the author and the finisher of our faith. Uh, let us remember all bereaved families that have lost loved ones um, down uh, through this year and down through the years. Let us pray uh, for those that are having mental anguish and depression and oppression, going through uh, mental uh, problems and issues. Let us pray for those that are also going through physical uh, problems in their bodies and financial uh, difficulties. Let us pray, hallelujah, for heads of state, those that are in power and authority. Let us pray also sincerely for our Bible study on tonight that the Lord will feed our hearts and our minds, that we'll receive his word and apply it on a daily basis. Amen? Amen. 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 Let every heart pray, O oh, gracious Father, in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We just say thank you and praise you for your greatness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your kindness. We thank you for how good you've been to each and every one of us. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord, for your greatness as we have already stated because you are wonderful and you are awesome in our sight. We ask you, Lord, that you bless our service on today. Remember men and women and children everywhere. Lord, you save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Send forth deliverance. Send forth power. In the name of Jesus, comfort the sick, uh, comfort those that are bereaving, heal those that need to be delivered in the name of Jesus. Send financial breakthrough, send financial blessings, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Open up our hearts and our minds to give us that comfort, that shalom that we need, that we desire. Father, we thank you and we praise you, give you glory and honor in Jesus' precious and mighty name. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. And as we uh, get ready for our Bible study on today, thank you, Lord. We want to uh, move into our second quiz, and we're talking about the school of wisdom. Amen. So we want to move into our second quiz, and as we prepare for it to be handed out, um, we want you to get yourselves ready. Hallelujah. And we'll review it and go over it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God is good, and he's greatly to be praised. Some of it is a review from last week, uh, but it connects uh, to our Bible study on today. Thank you, Jesus. And it's good to, to have these quizzes so that uh, it's one way for me to, <laughs> to know that, that you're gaining something from the class. Thank you, Jesus. Quiz is helping uh, the pastor. So the first question on the quiz is uh, define knowledge. Define knowledge. Amen. And the second question on the quiz is define understanding. Define understanding. And number three is define wisdom. Define wisdom. Define wisdom. Thank you, Jesus. Next question is, what is the best way to obtain knowledge from the scriptures? What is the best way? What is the best way to obtain knowledge from the scriptures? Thank you. Next question deals with, it says, when you know and understand what God requires, when you know and understand what God requires, what is the next step to success? What should you do next? Amen. What should you do next? When you know what God, when you know and understand what God requires of you. What should you do next? Amen. <coughs> scripture said, I mean, scripture. <laughs> if I don't mean scripture. The next question is, if you want to obtain God's blessings slash or his promises, his blessings and or promises, you must blank the scriptures. You must blank the scriptures. Thank you. The next question is name three ways to help you not to forget the word of God. Name three ways to help you not to forget God's word. Three strategies, three ways that will help you not to forget the word of God. The next question it asks you, how often does God want you to read his word? How often does God want you to read the 
study his word. Amen. The next question, true or false? The heart of man is pure and automatically obeys God. True or false? The heart of man is pure and automatically He's gone. True or false? The heart of man contains the will, emotions, and desires. True or false? The heart of man contains the will, the emotions, and desires. True or false? The peace of God comes from keeping, comes from keeping, knowing, and keeping God's commands. True or false? The peace of God comes from keeping and knowing and keeping God's commands. Next question is, do you need to pray for wisdom? Do you need to pray for wisdom? The next question is, do you search the scriptures for knowledge? Do you search the scriptures for knowledge? And last but not least, do you seek and ask for discernment to understand the scriptures to apply them to a particular situation? Self-examination. Do you seek and ask for discernment to understand the scriptures to apply them to a particular situation? Are you handing out the, the quizzes? All right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. All right. We're going to move right into it. Uh, amen. And what we'll do is we'll go over these after the Bible study. Two minutes. When I say after the Bible study. Do within our allotted time frame. But I wanted to move into our Bible study for tonight. Amen. Tonight, I want you to uh, turn with me over to uh, the book of. Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, chapter number one. The book of Ephesians, chapter number one. And we certainly do praise and thank God for his wisdom. And we're going to talk about wisdom on today and conclude our series and, uh, that we've been teaching. In the book of Proverbs, we were discussing and talking about uh, natural wisdom, the ability to uh, obtain knowledge and gain understanding and apply that knowledge and understanding, which is wisdom, to our daily lives in order to be successful. God gives us his commands his word, and when we apply that word, it automatically leads to success. Why? Because God is always in control, and it's a sure thing. God's word is sure. 
um, I was so convinced of God's word that I was uh, talking to uh, a brother one day and he was telling me how he had planned to shack up and I was telling him that um, as sure as I'm standing here before you, that you shacking up won't be successful because God wants man and woman to be married in order to live together. That's God, that's his plan. So when individuals try to shack up and try to live whole, it will never work out because it goes against God's plan. It goes against God's command. And God will never change his plans or his commands for anyone because his word is already set. And when we know these things, then um, it's, it's foolish to try to make a round peg fit into a square hole. We're just wasting time. So sure enough, the brother um, disobeyed all advice and went and shacked up. And sure enough, it came to naught. Um, that's, that's, the, that's the power and the beauty of the word of God that God gives us. He gives us insight so that we can avoid pitfalls, so that we can avoid trouble and be able to take God's advice and live by it and be successful. Above all and everything else, God wants you to have great success. And great success is determined by your level of ability to obey God's word, to trust in the Lord with all your heart and not lean to your own understanding, but to acknowledge him in all your ways so that he can direct your path. God wants to direct your path. Amen. God wants to get glory out of your life. Amen. So as we uh, had taught on, on the last past two weeks uh, about uh, the school of wisdom, we taught on a natural level. Now I want to uh, bring it to a spiritual level, a spiritual level of wisdom. There's a natural level of wisdom, but then there is a spiritual level level of wisdom. Amen? Hallelujah. My God. Y'all ready? I'm ready. I feel this thing. Something about to happen. <laughs> and so Ephesians chapter number one. And let us, uh, this particular book uh, is, a, is a masterpiece. Uh, along, all God's word is a masterpiece if you allow me to say it. But there's two books that stick out for me. And that's the book of Ephesians and the book of Romans. Uh, masterpieces. Amen. As far as uh, uh, the doctrines of salvation. As far as what the Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ, has done for us. And how, how we fit. The book of Ephesians tell you how you fit into the body of that God has predestinated you, and called you, and sanctified you, gave you of his spirit, how he has redeemed you. That at one time you were without hope and without God. Uh, but God uh, saved and delivered you through Jesus Christ. And now you are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, prepared unto every good work. And in, in other words, God has prepared you. Hallelujah. God has, has, has done great and precious things for you. And then in the book, of it tells you that we must uh, put on the whole armor of God that we might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. But I'm getting ahead of myself. But let us drop down then um, to Ephesians chapter number 1 and verse 15. Ephesians 1 and 15. Ephesians 1 and 15 uh, is literally a prayer, a prayer of the Apostle Paul. He's praying for the saints that they may receive something. Amen. It's a prayer for the saints that we might receive something. 
So he says, uh, Ephesians 1 and 15, he says, Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints. Paul is referring to the Ephesian church that he had heard uh, of their faith, and he had heard of their love toward the saints in Christ Jesus. Notice verse 16, he says, I cease not uh, to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Paul was praying for the people of God, and he's making mention of, of the saints. Uh, verse 17, 1 and 17, here we go. He says, he's praying that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, Notice what he says, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now, uh, our Bible study now tonight is shifting from natural wisdom to spiritual wisdom. Spiritual wisdom comes from the spirit. It comes from the Holy Ghost. And, and notice what he says. He says, that verse 17, I'm praying uh, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, notice, may give unto you. Amen. This the wisdom comes from God, both spiritual and natural. It comes from God. God is the author of it, and it comes to you through Jesus Christ. Because he is our mediator. Amen? Notice what he says. He wants to give unto you uh, the spirit of wisdom. Amen? And this spirit of wisdom is an attribute of the Holy Ghost. Is the Holy Ghost. There's only one spirit. If, um, and when I'm saying that, uh, that operates within us. That's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost works with us to give us spiritual wisdom. And we know that wisdom is literally the skill to live life successfully. That's wisdom. Applying what God reveals to you, giving you knowledge and understanding so that you may uh, live a successful life. And that comes through the Holy Ghost. Go with me uh, real quick over here to the uh, book of the book of uh, Isaiah, especially Isaiah chapter 11. Dear glory. Hallelujah. We have Say amen. amen. All right. So uh, Isaiah chapter 11. Notice. It says, these are the, the seven spirit, uh, the seven, I'm going to say it this way, the seven attributes of the Holy Ghost. The seven attributes of the Holy Ghost. I know we say the seven spirits of God, but the Bible doesn't say that doesn't have a spirit with the X. Notice, it says, And there shall come forth out, uh, come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Notice, and the spirit of the Lord, not spirits, spirit of the Lord. Amen? And that spirit of the Lord is the Holy Ghost. If you want spiritual discernment, spiritual wisdom, you must ask and receive the Holy Ghost. God wants you to have it. Amen? God knows you need it. And he will not withhold any good thing from you. It's his good pleasure to give you the Holy Ghost. Amen? All right, now notice. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Notice, the spirit of wisdom, understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, 
the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and he shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. Amen? And that all comes through the Holy Ghost. It's like sometimes we say uh, uh, the fruit of the Spirit, and that's love, patience, and, and kindness, gentleness, meekness, faith, and such like. Uh, it's not fruits of the Spirit, it's the fruit of the Spirit. It's what the Spirit produces. Amen? The Holy Ghost is one Spirit, and it produces this within you. Amen? So that you'll notice now, as we move forward, uh, uh, and it shall make you to, verse 33, and it shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and notice, this is why God gives it to you. So you don't judge after the sight of your eyes. Your eyes are deceitful. Your heart is deceitful. The Bible says, and desperately wicked. Amen? Hallelujah. So, so God gives you wisdom and this spirit, the Holy Ghost, so that you don't judge after the sight of your eyes. How many times have your eyes deceived you? You didn't see what you thought you saw. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I know that. that so it, uh, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, nor reprove after the hearing of your ears. Your ears are deceitful. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now note, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor. So, so God wants you to judge every situation, every uh, relationship, amen, through the eyes of righteousness. That's why the Holy Ghost is given unto you, so that you can make righteous decisions. A natural carnal-minded man, they may understand God's principles and, and apply them, but a, 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 a spiritual man has to discern God's will through the spirit in order to uh, apply God's word successfully. Amen? Uh, there's a difference. Uh, because God has uh, uh, universal laws by which man, if they obey them, can be blessed. But when it comes down to spiritual laws, they're only discerned through the Spirit, through the Holy Ghost. Amen? And God opens them up to an individual through his anointing, through the Holy Ghost. When Jesus got ready to uh, fulfill his mission, he quoted the scripture out of the book of Isaiah. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me. And then he went down through the litany of what he was anointed to do. When you walk in God's spirit, the spirit of the Lord is upon you and he anoints you. Hallelujah. So that you can be successful. It empowers you. Hallelujah. So you can live a holy and righteous life. Now, a carnal-minded man, a carnal-minded woman won't be able to understand the righteousness of God. Uh, but a spiritual person is able to understand it because they're able to understand it through the discernment of the Spirit or through the discernment of the Holy Ghost. Y'all with me? All right. Thank you, Lord. Now notice then. Let us go back over. Hallelujah. Shalom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let us go back over uh, to the book of Ephesians, chapter number 1. All right? Y'all with me? Ephesians chapter number 1, and where do we leave off with? Verse 17. Paul is praying. He's literally praying that the saints receive the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost in order to have spiritual wisdom. Notice, notice then what he's saying. He said, he's praying that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Ephesians 1 and 17, the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So he's, he's saying, when if you want to have spiritual wisdom, he's saying that 
He, you, uh, uh, the Holy Ghost, he wants, he's praying that the Holy Ghost would, would uh, make you wise and make you to understand all the spiritual doctrines of Jesus Christ. Now let me take my time with this just for a minute. He's praying that the Holy Ghost will open up your understanding so that you would understand the great doctrines of salvation or of Jesus Christ. What do you mean, Brother Pastor? He's praying that, that the doctrine of, of, of forgiveness, that you'll understand God's doctrine of forgiveness. People don't understand in general about how much God wants you to forgive and how much you're being able to forgive those that hurt you and do things against you, how it relates to your salvation. The scripture, uh, when we uh, quote the Lord's Prayer, it says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy what? Kingdom come, what? Thy will be done uh, in earth as it is in heaven. Then he says, uh, forgive us of our trespasses or forgive us of our debts as we forgive those that what? Trespass. That's a doctrine of salvation we have to understand that if I don't forgive people, God won't forgive me. Uh, and the Lord has, has that's, that's the reason why Jesus came to this earth. God so loved the world that he what? Gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him might have what? Everlasting life. So, 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 so God is literally forgiving you when you believe on Jesus. That's a doctrine. You can't change that. There's a doctrine of mercy. Huh? You, you, if you want to be saved and walk with the Lord, you got to show mercy. Huh? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall what? Obtain mercy. If you don't show and understand the doctrine of mercy, huh, which is exhibited in Jesus Christ. Remember when he was dying on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. Huh? Show them some mercy, for they don't know what they're doing. Huh? And, and that's, that's wisdom. That's spiritual wisdom. And, and that's what Paul is, is, is asking uh, the saints to pray for the Holy Ghost so they can be able to understand these doctrines. Amen? The doctrine of forgiveness, the doctrine of mercy, and also being able to understand the doctrine of sanctification. Huh? Understand the doctrine of sin and death. Amen? Um, we, the Bible, we should not be ignorant uh, we should not be ignorant of these things. And God does not want us to be ignorant of these things. I've got to understand what is the doctrine of, of sin and death. Huh? Thank you, Lord. I've got I to be able to understand what that is. I've got to be able to understand what is the doctrine of sanctification. What's the doctrine of holiness? Amen? What's the doctrine? What's the purpose of of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, these are spiritual things that need to be spiritually discerned so that we can have spiritual wisdom. Now, my point in bringing all that up is this, is that when we know these things, it makes us strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. When we know these things, it gives us peace that passes all understanding. When I know the doctrine of salvation, when the scripture says put on the helmet of salvation, uh, that means that, that, that I know I'm saved and I'm walking in salvation and that gives me peace. When the enemy wants to come and tell me you're not saved and you're no good, uh, I know what Jesus has done for me. Uh, I know where the Lord has brought me from. And when, when we understand what the doctrine of condemnation is, uh, and, and I can quote then uh, uh, Romans chapter number 8, uh, 
up when the enemy wants to accuse me. I, I say there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. There's, it makes a difference. Hallelujah. When you understand the doctrine of faith, you can lay hands on the sick huh, and they shall recover. You can speak to your mountains. Oh, they ain't got a little shot. Hallelujah. You can, you can call those things. You can declare and decree of the word of God. And that elevates you. Huh? That elevates your walk with the Lord. You won't be so easily moved and deterred by what you see. When you understand the doctrine of being tested and being tried and how that worked good for you. Huh? you. You won't get upset when things don't go your way. Huh? You know that all things are working together for your good. Hallelujah. When you, when you understand these things. Amen. Hallelujah. But in order to understand them, you got to take time and spend time with the word of God and be led by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now notice then. Notice. Verse 17. He says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the what? Spirit of wisdom. Now, he's praying, he's asking that Jesus do this for you. It's because Jesus is your mediator. Amen? He's the mediator between God and man. Huh? And, and in him, we live. And in Jesus, we move. Amen? And in him, we have our being. Amen? Hallelujah. It's all about Jesus. That's what I'm trying to get you to see. It's all about Jesus. And Peter, Peter says this in his epistle. He says, he says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? The more you know about him and apply what you know to your life, the greater peace you will have, the greater joy you will have. And, and you got to understand what peace and joy is. Huh? Peace and joy is not getting a new house, getting a new car. Huh? It's the inner state of a man or a woman. Huh? That inner state never changes. It's not dependent upon the circumstances. It's dependent upon God. And, and God, he never changes. Amen? Hallelujah. My car may break down, but that doesn't destroy my joy. That doesn't take away my peace. People may walk out on me, huh? but that doesn't disturb my joy. Huh? That doesn't take away my peace. People may even die. Amen? Huh? But that doesn't disturb your joy. That doesn't disturb your peace. Huh? Because that joy and that peace, what I'm talking about, comes from God. Yeah. Hallelujah. I love it when the old saints say, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Amen? Hallelujah. And you can have that. Huh? Jesus said, my peace give I unto you. And didn't Jesus display a great deal of peace when we read the scriptures uh, be, uh, when he was going toward Calvary Mountain, Judas turned his back on him. Uh, not only did Judas, but the rest of the apostles, they left him. Amen? They beat him. Didn't they beat him? Uh, they, they hung him up uh, with, with common thieves. But that didn't disturb Jesus' peace. That didn't take away his joy. Am I right? Hallelujah, my God, my God. Because he was doing the will of his father. Huh? When you do the will of, when you're doing the will of your father, huh? now, nothing can disturb you. Nothing can move you. Huh? Hallelujah, if you stay focused. Am I right? Who am I talking to here today? Hallelujah, my God, my God. Now, let's move on. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Now, notice 
what he said. He said, the Father of glory give unto you. So, so it's given. You don't work for it. You don't work for the Holy Ghost. Amen. We often tarry, but the tarrying is just to get the person in the presence of the Lord. If you get into the presence of the Lord, just ask. Huh? Ask. And it says his good pleasure to give it to you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And, and repent. Like, Lord, I need a change in my life. Uh, I need a change in my life. I'm going to turn from darkness uh, to walk in your marvelous light. Lord, I can't make this journey without you. I need you. Amen? When you make those kind of confessions and God searches your heart because he knows your heart, uh, thank you, Lord, he'll give you the Holy Ghost because you've met the condition. Amen? He'll give it to you. Now notice, he give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Of him is Jesus Christ. Amen? The more you know about Jesus, the greater joy and peace you'll have. The more you understand the doctrines, amen? I'm talking about the doctrines now of Jesus Christ. The doctrine of forgiveness. There's a doctrine of forgiveness. There's a doctrine of salvation, sanctification. Amen? Y'all with me? And what do I mean by doctrines? That these, these doctrines are his teachings. That's the word the word doctrines mean. The teachings of, of what Jesus says about forgiveness. The, the teachings of what Jesus says about salvation. The, there's a doctrine of forgiveness. There's a doctrine of giving. Amen? Thank you, Lord. You can't, you can't give somebody something and, and you all upset and angry. Here, take it. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You ain't going to get blessed. <laughs> But the Lord said, he loved a cheerful giver. Amen? Here, take it. You, you, huh? then, then you go and think that you're going to be blessed of the Lord. Loose here. You're not going to be blessed. Because the Lord said, he loves a cheerful giver. Amen? I'm going to give Sister Louise something. I'm standing here. Everybody look at me. I'm about to give this to Sister Louise. Poor Sister Louise. She don't have it. And I'm, I'm giving it to her. Huh? The Bible says you're not going to get nothing. Huh? If people say, oh, he's a good man or he's a good woman, that's all you won't get. Because the doctrine is give it secretly. Huh? That's the doctrine. That's what doctrine means. Jesus teaches his doctrine in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. You master 5, 6, and 7 in the book of St. Matthew, it lays you a solid foundation. Amen? Because that's what the, 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 the apostles teach from. The letters, the epistles. Amen? They come from Jesus' uh, 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 Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Amen? Uh, you got to love the right way. Amen. There's a doctrine of love. Amen. Your love, the way you love, it can't be superficial, sometimes. Huh? God wants you to love with a agape love. <laughs> Paul breaks that doctrine out in the book of, 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 of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. He tells you how to love. Amen. Uh, you got to, and, and the Holy Ghost gives you wisdom. Gives you insight into that. This is what Paul is talking about here when he's talking about spiritual wisdom. Amen? A lazy person who don't like to read, I know that's bad English. <laughs> huh? They won't get this. You don't get this through osmosis by putting the Bible on your head. 
Huh? You don't get this by playing Alex Scorby. Oh, oh well, I'm thinking around him on his tapes. But, but playing Bible tapes and while you sleeping. I'm hearing the word. Huh? Getting it subliminally, unconsciously. No, you're not going to get it. Huh? You, know, you got to go into the book. You got to study his word. Amen? And then meditate on his word. <laughs> How often? Day and night. Then you got to pray. Huh? And ask God, God lead me and guide me. Help me to make the right decision. Huh? Hey, Lord. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now notice what he said. He said, pray then uh, unto God for the spirit of wisdom and, and revelation. Amen. Now, the spirit of, uh, of revelation that comes through the Holy Ghost, it means uh, the more that uh, is, it means this, that when you receive something, you're praying to God that you receive more. Let me say that again. The spirit of revelation. It deals with you once, once you receive something from God and you apply that which you receive, God gives you more. Let me say that again. When you receive from God something, he tells you something through the spirit, through the Holy Ghost, through his word, he reveals it to you. And you apply it, you do it, you get more. Amen? You get more. God gives you more. People who are spiritual giants aren't spiritual giants. They're, they're, they're spiritual giants because they have applied what God has given them and they receive more. A person that God gives a revelation to and they don't abide by it or do it, they don't get nothing. They don't receive more. Because they have not been faithful in what God has already revealed to them. That's a principle of God. That's reaping and sowing. Or sowing and reaping. Amen? Uh, sometimes, uh, I got to teach this more. Sometimes, when we look at the scripture that says, Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Sometimes, we look at that too much in the negative context. We've got to flip that baby around. Lord, forgive me. We've got to flip that around. Thank you, Jesus. We've got to flip it around. Thank you, Jesus. I act like I'm at home now. Get myself together. <laughs> We've got to flip it around. Huh? Because I want to please God. You want to please God. You want to walk with God. So, so I'm not so concerned about sowing negativity as much as now I've been changed. I, I've been renewed. You've been changed. You've been renewed. You, your focus now is sowing and doing good. Huh? And, and, and reaping from what the good that you're doing. Amen? Uh, we spend too much time on the negative. God doesn't want you to spend time on the negative. He wants you to spend time on the positive. Because so a man thinketh in his heart, but so it dare not go. Hallelujah. I tell myself, you can do it, brother. Uh, I talk, you talk to yourself. Uh, I, I'm, I'm wonderfully and curiously made. Uh, God, he has made us. Uh, and I can do this. Huh? Thank you. I don't dwell in my heart about all my deficits. I know I got it. Huh? And they'll show up from time to time. Huh? But I, I focus on it and accentuate the positive. That's what we got to do. Accentuate the positive. God looks upon the positive. Huh? My God. Notice. Look at that scripture. I know the thoughts that I think toward you say uh, the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil uh, to give you an expected end. Uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11. Amen? So God is not thinking toward you and trying to commit evil toward you. So why do we spend time thinking about evil? How to perform evil? We should be spending time how to perform good. Amen? Walk in the light as he is in the light. I don't spend my time thinking about how I can get 
get older? Man, how, 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 can I, how, can I, how can I manipulate the saints today? What can I do? What can I do to manipulate them, Lord? That's <laughs> uh, moving. Thank you, Lord. My God. Uh, ain't that foolish? So, so we have to focus on the, the positive. Amen? God wants you to focus in on the positive. That's why the scriptures were written so that they could give you a fair adjustment of where you were and where God wants to bring you to. All right? Paul says this. He said, he said in, in that context, I'm forgetting those things that are behind huh? because my past, I can't do nothing with it. <laughs> it's done. It's done. Huh? And he said, I'm reaching for those things that what? Are before me. And if it get too hard, I'm pressing. Yeah. Huh? I'm pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ. He was all about Jesus. Yes. We got to be all about Jesus. Yeah. Amen? All of me, my God. And know what Jesus has said. Am I right? All right, now let's move on. So, so the spirit of revelation is simply the, the more that is revealed to you about Jesus, the more you receive. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And that revelation, then, this is the revelation. The revelation is his doctrine, his teachings. That's what Paul is saying. The more you start studying the doctrines or the teachings of Jesus, the deeper you'll gain information about about the doctrines, his teaching. You'll understand how the puzzle fits. You'll understand the need to forgive people. you understand the need to suffer persecution. You'll even begin to understand why you go through what you go through. <laughs> you'll understand your past. Huh? Y'all ready? Thank you, Lord. You understand that, that though you have been through your past, and though you your past seems to spring up on you, often you understand something about Jesus. Amen? And how he helps you with your grief and helps you with your past sorrow. Y'all ready? Let's go there for a minute. This is all, this is, this is, this is out of the bounds of my Bible study, but I want to show you something. Isaiah, Shama. Isaiah chapter 53. Lord have mercy. See my wife's voice in my head right now. <laughs> Isaiah 53. Notice. Y'all, when y'all have it, say amen. All right, Isaiah 53. It says, verse number one. Who hath believed our report? The report about Jesus. What was written about Jesus. And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been what? That's Jesus Christ. He shall grow up before you as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground, have no form or no comeliness, and we should see him. There's no beauty that we should desire him. That's him being on the cross. All right? Notice, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with what? Grief. And we hid as they were our faces from him, and he was despised, and we esteemed him not. This next verse is what I brought you here for. Notice, surely he hath what? Borne our griefs. Huh? And did what? Carrie, when you know that about Jesus and you got some grief in your life and some grief uh, and some sorrows uh, in your past that you're trying to deal with and go over, you can rest assured all of that was dealt with on the cross. Uh, because Jesus himself has gone through it. He knows how to deliver you. He knows how to be uh, 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 to, to build you up through all of your griefs and through all of your sorrows. Just like the woman with the issue.
issue of blood. She said, if I can but just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. When you got grief and sorrow and no, the Bible says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give thee what? Rest from your grief. Rest from your past. Rest from your sorrows. Amen? That's what Jesus does for you. He takes the broken and makes them whole. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I was broken. I don't leave, but now I'm whole. That's, huh? Am I right? How many of you were broken, but now you're whole? Hallelujah. Through Jesus Christ. Amen? And it's so awesome uh, that, that, that now I take my deficit and make it a testimony. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I talk about myself and how the Lord has brought me. You should uh, realize that what you've been through has made you better. Uh, what you've been through, has, what Jesus has made you strong. Amen? And then with that same comfort that he comforts you with, you're able to turn around and comfort others. To help other people. Amen? Hallelujah. All right, let's go back. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and just give them a praise. Thank you, Lord. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. So we know then what wisdom is and knowledge. The revelation in the knowledge of who? Jesus. Notice what he says. Verse 18, he says, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is what? The hope of his calling, the hope of the reason why Jesus came and died, gave his life, rose again from the grave for you. Amen? The hope that he had in him concerning you. Amen? Notice what he said. That, that you might know. You got to know why Jesus came to this life. Huh? To this world. Why he died. Why he rose again for you. First and foremost, he did it to save you from your sins. Secondarily, he did it so that you can fulfill your purpose, your calling upon this earth. Let me say that again. Jesus died, first and foremost, to save you from your sins. Secondarily, he came so that you can re uh, uh, perform your duties upon this earth. Amen? Then thirdly, so that you can obtain eternal life. That's it in a nutshell. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm teaching today. Thank you, Lord. You get that. You got it. Amen? Why did Jesus come? Save me from my sins. Why did Jesus come? So I can fulfill the purpose that God has in me on this earth. Amen? And thirdly, to receive eternal life. Notice, 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 notice the prayer that we call, we call it the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which is in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Here we go. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where? On earth. As where? As it is in heaven. What that prayer, that portion of that prayer is saying is, Lord, Lord, manifest your will in us, your people, so that we can manifest your will upon this earth. That's what that prayer means. Manifest your will within us 
so that we can manifest your will upon this earth. Amen? That, that comes through the manifestation of the kingdom of God. The manifestation of the kingdom of God comes through the Spirit, through the Holy Ghost, through the anointing. Amen? Scripture said, tells us that God has not given us what? The spirit of fear, but love, power, and sound mind. Amen? Then it talks about the, the, the kingdom of heaven is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you're receiving the kingdom of God so that you can manifest it upon this earth. Let me say that again so that we can get this. Amen? When you receive the Holy Ghost, you receive the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? Righteousness, joy, and peace. Amen? So that, and, and it comes with power. So that you can manifest it upon this earth. Y'all with me? All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 1 and 18 says that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is what? The hope of his calling. That that your eyes of your understanding is literally your mind. It's your mind. The eyes of your understanding is your mind. The Bible says, let this mind be what? In you, which is where? Also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God, Thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but being found himself as the fashion of a man, he what? Humbled himself and became what? Obedient unto what? Death. We have to have that mind that I'm going to be obedient until I die. Not till I till I receive a greater temptation. Not until a, a, a better proposition comes. Not until, well, I did that yesterday. I don't feel like doing that today. You know how we can be. Huh? But he said, be obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now notice with Jesus. Wherefore, God had highly exalted him. Huh? And giving him a name above what? Every name. Amen? When you are in Jesus, if you understand the doctrine of elevation, you're highly exalted. You should live above sin. When you understand it. Am I right? <laughs> Though temptation may come, you live above it. Because you're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now I'm getting off a Bible study now. I got to come back. <laughs> Amen? Now, the Holy Ghost works with your mind to help you to understand spiritual things. Amen? You discern spiritual things by the Spirit. 
And the Holy Ghost helps you with that. Now, let's, 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 let me show you. Let's go over to first, um, not first, uh, John, John, chapter 14. See that what the enemy tried to do? For 
he shall not speak of who? Himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So the Holy Ghost, it talks about Jesus. Amen? Jesus says, I am the way, the what? Truth and the life. The Holy Ghost gives you a revelation into Jesus Christ. Amen? Who is your salvation? Who is your deliverer? All right? Y'all with me? Now, let's go back over then to uh, Ephesians chapter number one. We're going to wrap this up. Y'all get anything? Amen. Amen. All right. Notice then. Verse 18. Paul is praying that you receive the Holy Ghost, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that your mind, amen? The Bible talks about Jesus brings it out this way in his, uh, uh, in his Sermon on the Mount, that the, the light of the body is the eye. And if the body be evil, it is full of darkness. But if it be of light, how great is that light? Amen? That's that, that the light that he's talking about is the word of God dwelling in your mind. The more uh, of God's word you have hid in your heart, the, the brighter your pathway will be. People only can conform or perform that what they know. Amen? The more you know uh, about Jesus, the wiser you will be. Let me say that again. The more you know about Jesus, <laughs> the wiser you will be. The reason why I laughed is I, I thought about the opposite. The less you know about Jesus, the duller you will be. <laughs> I don't want to be dumb. Amen? Thank you, Lord. All right. Now notice, he said uh, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that ye may know what the hope of his calling, the reason why you're in the body of Christ, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. You got to know what you're fighting for. Y'all remember? Uh, brother Esau and Jacob. Esau didn't understand his birthright until it was too late and sold his birthright for a bowl of soup. <laughs> and Jacob understood it. Tricked him out of it. Hmm? You would think in that story that, man, why God blessed him? He got it, he got it by trickery. But it was already prophesied. Amen? That, that the, the younger, the, the elder would serve the younger. And Jacob was the younger. God already knew. In other words, what would happen? Y'all with me? He hated him. Because cause Jacob, hate, I mean Esau, hated his birthright. Well, let's see the Holy Ghost say, man, you got to go a little deeper. Esau was self-willed. He did what he wanted to do. <laughs> Esau <laughs> was like Samson. All Samson had was unsaved girlfriends. <laughs> That's it. And when he saw one, he went after him. God didn't like that. Y'all know? God don't like when we claim righteousness and holiness. And, and not esteem the things he doesn't esteem. You got to love what God loves and hate what God hates. And, and that doesn't come natural. That's not natural to us. You got to work at that. Huh? There's some parts
kinds of sin that are pleasurable to the flesh. But they'll quench the spirit. Huh? Ruin your destination. So you got to turn away from that which is detrimental to you. Am I right? That's wisdom. And you do that through knowing your inheritance. Knowing what you have in Christ. Knowing your blessing. Knowing your calling and your purpose. Amen? Now we get a little deep up in here. I feel like a little saint speeding coming on. <laughs> All right, let me finish up. Oh, Lord have mercy. All right? Uh, verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to uh, the working of his mighty power? Now, hold on, let me stop right there because I want to go into that. But I don't want to go into it right now. My time is running out. All right? Let's go back over to our quiz. Any questions on the Bible study? All right. Well, we certainly do thank God uh, for each and every one of you. Uh, and we thank God for his grace and his mercy and all that God has given unto us. We thank God for all of our Facebook family that is tuned in. We pray that something said here today would, would bless you and to encourage your heart. In Jesus' name, see you next Thursday, next Wednesday, and or next Sunday, whichever comes first. <laughs> In Jesus' name.